Thank you to Welsh National Opera for providing me with review tickets for this performance. Good evening campers, it's me Kira, and this is another instalment of Fat Boy at the Opera, where I went to see Janacek's Marco Palouse Affair. Now, when I go to see the opera, I always get a programme, and I always open up the synopsis and kind of get an understanding of what's going to happen before I go in. Because opera does this wonderful thing of sometimes not telling you who anyone is while simultaneously expecting that you have prior knowledge of everything that's happened before. Why? Because opera. Now with thanks and with the help of Welsh National Opera, I've seen a fair few operas now. I'll leave my playlist down below and I've seen a Janacek performance before of Yennefer, which I thoroughly enjoy, and is actually the one I've enjoyed the most out of all of them I've seen. So I thought, well, you know, I'm not a novice anymore. I'm a seasoned professional. I'm going to go into this blind. I'm not going to read the synopsis. I think I know what's going to happen. It's called The Affair. There's going to be some love. There's going to be some lust. There's probably going to be some scoodly pooping. And while all of that did happen, the, the plot to this is as convoluted as it comes and halfway through during the interval I spent a lot of time speaking to people trying to figure out what on earth had happened. Open up in a law firm, it's a bit like CSI opera, maybe it's not like that, maybe it's a bit like Suits, mm. uh, Law and Order, Law and Opera, we open up with Law and Opera. Hi, it's the next day, somehow my battery died halfway through doing this as I tried to explain one of the most complicated plot and character relationships. But hey ho, here we go again. Two law clerks, Dr. Colonati and Vita, are very excited for this day. Why, there has been a century-long inheritance legal feud between Proust and Greg, and today is the day where the announcement is going to be made. Albert Gregor comes on to see, he's a little bit agitated, he's the Gregor in the Gregor case, so he's waiting anxiously because he wants to know if the Lukov estate is now him. Vitek's daughter Krista comes in, she doesn't care about all of this, the only thing she wants to wang on about is that Amelia Marty, a prize lauded fantastic opera singer, has come into the opera house. Who owns the opera house? It's Baron Proust, the Proust of the legal case. Krista, who has now fulfilled her destiny in saying that piece of information, leaves. And who takes her place on stage as a female character? Amelia Marty. Amelia Marty is ah, ambiguous and she has some information that could help this case go one way or the other. The reason why this court case has gone on for a century is that there was a verbal agreement but no written will. A verbal agreement said upon the deathbed is that the estate should go to Mark Gregor. Now Mark is a common name in Czech similar to Smith or Jones in Britain. So there's a bit of confusion of well who does that mean? Amelia Marty says it's not Mark Gregor but Muck Gregor. This leads on to one of the most comedic moments in the opera. I don't think it's meant to be a comedic moment, but I chuckle. Emilia Marty says, there's a will and everyone unequivocally just like agrees that that's plausible. And then when she mentions, it also involves a Scottish woman, everyone goes, nah, nah, I can't, that can't surely happen. Absolutely not. Dr. Colonati will go off to look for the will and it turns out that the will is actually there. How does Albert Gregor feel about all of this? He's too busy thinking about what he would do with Emilia Marty than the actual estate itself. End of Act 1. In Act 2 we change our focus to the backstage of an opera house. This is Baron Proust's opera house. So we're going to get to know him a little bit more. But not before we meet his son Yannick who is having a bit of a scoodly poop session with Krista. Baron walks in and stops that action happening like any good parent would. But don't worry, this is an opera, so Baron Proust isn't a great fella, because at the end of Act 2, Yannick will try to scoodly poop with Amelia Marty, and the Baron, again, stops that from happening, and like any good father does, then ends up sleeping with Amelia Marty. Well, that's not good parenting 101. Act 2 is a little bit wild, yeah. Marty. She keeps dropping names of women throughout this who all have the same initials, E. M. Even the written will is side E. M. Elaine McGregor, and there is suspicion to who Amelia Marty is. She has just kind of burst onto the scene. It obviously raises eyebrows and suspicions, but no one is expecting the madman to burst onto stage saying that, ah, it's you again. I, I met you 50 years ago, and you're still as beautiful to this day. He's spouting off this intricate story and information, but because he's the local madman, 
and everyone's kind of taking it with a pinch of salt. But Janacek's opera moves into surreal territory. Even in Act 3, we have, in the space of like 10 minutes, we have a sex scene. We have people being held at gunpoint for all of 10 seconds. We have a moment of liquid confidence. We have a moment where people realize that their lustful behavior might be incestuous. Stolen jewelry, a castanet dance, and getting caught up in curtains. And if that wasn't bonkers enough, Marty's looking for a magic potion, which really, once you get to the end of the play, you realize that this is really a case study for poor time management. Really, if Marty put a to-do list together and stopped procrastinating, like, she could have got there, like, way more in time for this magic potion. She really left it till last minute. Why? Well, I don't know. Because opera. What else is it to say? This is a complex narrative that takes some time to wrap your head around. But really at the baseline, just know that everyone's horny. Uh, so much so, the climax at the end is a horn symphony. You go horn section, you toot your own trumpet. Honestly, this was baffling. Despite trying to rack my head around this story, it's really entertaining. Like, I have to say, I think Janacek might be my favourite opera composer. Um, I've seen Yennefer and this. I really enjoyed them. Thank you again to Welsh National Opera for giving me this opportunity. And I think next one I'm going to be seeing La Boheme, which I know is based on Rent. And I, and I know, I, I, I haven't seen Rent. Links down below to all my other reviews. And go and check out an opera, people. Go and check out an opera, people. They're pretty good, you know.